what sets you apart at Moving Mountains in the way that you deliver hospitality? How do you differentiate yourselves in, in the delivery of that hospitality in your business? It really comes from the idea that we would move a mountain for our guests. Uh, that's something that we brought from our days of running a luxury yacht in the Caribbean as we heard our guests saying at the end of a charter that that was one of the best vacations that we've ever had. And we were trying to find a way to continue life on a yacht into life on land. It's about being willing to express to the guests, we'll do whatever it takes. It's part of the reason why I love that book, Unreasonable Hospitality, because that's an unreasonable proposition that you're making to the guest is we'll do what it takes. And you can say it many other ways. The answer is yes, tell me the question. It's not that you can say truly yes to everything, but we put our heart and soul into this and uh, we try to think of any way unreasonable or reasonable that we can deliver exactly what the guest is looking for. But if the guest has an easy experience booking the trip, getting here, the easy arrival, and let's just say that the weather cooperates for the entire stay, they're going to say that was a great trip, but they're never going to have any idea of the response that we're capable of mounting should there be some challenge. It's that that mindset of it's often when things aren't perfect and, and that may be something we did or maybe it's just something that happened with that guest and how we can respond, the difference that we can make. Every challenge is an opportunity. The team has become trained to look for those moments because it's those moments that your guests are actually going to notice who you are. It's those moments where the guest is going to say, thank God I didn't book some Airbnb with some faceless host who is perhaps on vacation somewhere in Florida. I really like that mindset. Rather than trying to have everything go perfectly, of course we try, but we can't control a lot of the things that can go on. Rather making it about how do you decide to respond to that? That's very, very impressive from one home to now 250 luxury properties and, and expanding. And it into, only took us 26 years. <laughs> it only, exactly. That's the best part, right? Like That's the less than sexy message that I think around the industry, I heard you talking with Rachel all day from Abode and she said it really well. The newer arrivals to this industry don't want to hear how long it took us to get here. I and mean, we've done it very slowly and methodically and like her and her husband, we celebrated many of the individual homes that we signed in the early days because every one of those was a building block upon which that became a foundation for growing our business. Our path to growth was extremely slow and steady and we're totally bootstrapped. And so every property we took on comes with a certain obligation to meet the commitment to that owner. At the same time, we're also raising a couple of kids and trying to keep our heads above water. So for us, the path to growth, it, it was 10 years before we even had 10 homes in the, in the company. And we were very, very slow and thoughtful, somewhat living hand to mouth. Moving the business away from our kitchen table was a significant step. So what do you think that having been around for so long gives you? The kind of relationships we have with owners and guests are not something you can just commoditize and just acquire overnight. The, the, the foundation of that is trust built up sometimes over many years. And the average owner is staying with us seven to 10 years. I do look at the people that are new to the industry who announce that, yeah, I'm in five markets and I have 350 homes and um, we've been going two and a half years. And I'm like, Maybe there are markets out there that are completely underserved. But what's going to keep you moving forwards is you have to have a solid business model behind that. So the longer you've been in business, I mean, if your average owner stays with you for 10 years, so now you're going through difficult times, they're going to understand it. Because you had those you have those 10 years to back you up of, of trust that has been built. Right. What would you say to someone that doesn't have 10 years behind a relationship with an owner, what are ways in which you would approach setting the right expectations with the homeowners and trying to build trust while not necessarily having the best results to showcase for at this time being? Be authentic from the beginning to the end. Don't come in with a flashy sales pitch that you can't deliver on. Establish authentic ground rules that when you're looking to onboard somebody into your portfolio, it's really important to you that you're aligned as far as your goals and your ambitions for that relationship. I did learn this from one of my owners who shared this feedback on a, on a video testimony he was doing for us. And he said, halfway through the, the interview, I realized that it wasn't just me interviewing him as to whether he was going to be my manager, 
he was sitting there checking out whether I was going to be a fit for him. So I think this alignment of goals, what is it you're looking to use the property for? Why would our services benefit? It should be a two-way conversation. Unless you are truly in the mode where you say, I'll take anything, which I, I don't think is a really strong foundation for this business for the long term. Our business model is to be a high yield, low touch model. We recognize that every night that someone stays in your home, cumulatively that can add up to some wear and tear. So in order for you to give up the use of your home to share your home, these owners, they want to have some meaningful revenue. So our business model is, is geared towards optimal returns on the rental nights and minimizing the wear and tear. If we notice that the home is booking like crazy, we'll intentionally increase the rate to lower the occupancy and improve the yield. And part of that, that language, that conversation about this is going to be meaningful. If we do rent your home, we're going to send you a check for thousands of dollars, ideally even tens of thousands. And the owners, when they start to see those checks coming in, they get excited. Then we're also coming through on another part of the deal. You can't just promise that you're not going to notice the difference. You have to put time and energy into your housekeeping and your maintenance and your quality assurance teams so that every detail is being captured. So yeah, there's no, so many, there's so many pieces to this. A lot of pieces of setting the right expectations. Mm -hmm. What's, what's the strategy going to be? Is it going to be a strategy of maximizing occupancy or is it going to be really being selective with the volume of each reservation that you decide to accept the quality of the guests that you're deciding to bring on and whatnot? There can be so much discrepancies between what you think is best versus the owner thinks is best if you if you don't have that communication up front, right? That's crucial. When you hear those people being negative and pessimistic about where the industry is at right now, what's your take on, on where we're at? What's your take on what's ahead? How are you navigating this period internally? If they are noticing that the booking patterns are down and that certain channels are not producing in the way that they used to, it would be an opportunity to evaluate every piece of how you do. If we're talking about the sales side of things, how you distribute, do you have a d direct booking strategy? I have heard from others that they just cannot logistically make a direct booking strategy work. The returns don't justify the cost. You can't just be on easy street and say, well, I'm just going to list on Airbnb. Maybe you can wiggle your way through that, but you're going to be down in the bottom of the rate segment fighting for every booking based on a on a dollar price to win a client on a dollar is the opportunity to lose them based on the same thing the next year that's not what brings people back to us it's about experience so yes the transaction matters and they have to feel the value but they're probably going to react and and desire to book you again based on how you made them feel as opposed to what you did for them. I would like to get some tips on what has allowed you to get to where you are currently. What are other things that you have implemented that you think have made a difference that are perhaps more actionable for people out there that might be listening? What would you say has worked for you to have such good results in terms of direct bookings overall? I think some people think that it's just one or two things and that will get you there. And we've done work on building, we're, our mindset is to we're building a brand. So Moving Mountains as a brand that stretches now across multiple mountain destinations and now is expanding into different vacation experiences. I would say, yes, you've got to do branding. Yes, you've got to do marketing campaigns. You've got to play the SEO game. You've got to have a great website and you have a business strategy that says, I'm going to grow to manage multiple homes. There is one thing that's so easy to say here, and that is you cannot do that without culture. And so company culture, that is probably one of the game changers for us. We always had a feeling of camaraderie and common goals and all the rest of it. But when we sat down with a business consultant friend and he said, you should do, write down your culture and really make sure that everyone in the company understands what you think the culture is. Now, with over 100 employees, you can't watch everybody. And I'm just amazed at what they do with this. What are the components of the strategic plan that any property management company out there should have. How do you think through that framework of what a strategic plan should look like? What I love about this, this industry is that you go to a conference and you'll meet the other managers, you'll find the people that are like you, and mm -hmm. then they are so willing to share. My strategy in going to conferences was to learn from others. And when mm -hmm. I started doing that, 
the more I did it, the more I learned. There's never been a single event I've been to that I haven't come home with 10 ideas about things we could do better, things we should focus on more. That's what keeps it interesting for me. There's not a day that goes by that you don't think, oh, I could have done that better. The strategy is learn from others. I got a lot of ideas that I've acquired from other people in the industry who just brought their perspective and their ideas and was a game changer for us.